The next City Skylines developer diary and feature highlight video dropped, this time covering electricity and water. And I'll be honest, going into this update I wasn't really expecting all that much. In City Skylines, utilities were fairly straightforward and in some cases felt like more of an obligation than an important game mechanic. But in City Skylines 2, utilities are important and should be a fun game mechanic that increase the realism of your city, not just in terms of its function, but also its aesthetics. The TLDR version, you're going to need to give your utility systems much more attention than you did in City Skylines. You're going to need to create a functional power grid for your city and a comprehensive water utility. You're now going to have the option to produce your utilities entirely locally, import them entirely, or connect to an outside connection to balance system spikes and surpluses. Power can now be stored for future utilization, and there is a new groundwater reservoir mechanic that should add a bit of complexity and challenge when creating inland cities. But there's a ton more to each of these topics, so in today's video, we're going to deep dive into the developer diary, then we'll go over the feature highlight video to see what secrets we can decode, and I'll let you know my reactions along the way. So let's begin by taking a look at the developer diary. Before we deep dive into the new electricity and water mechanics individually, let's discuss a few high-level items that have been confirmed. First, we now know that a residential building that lacks either water or power will reduce the well-being of its citizens. However, lacking water is actually more damaging since it negatively impacts citizens' health. Second, businesses and services will have their production and service quality reduced if they lack utility coverage. Third, water and power can be transferred via roads. However, water pipes and power lines are still in the game and are still required in certain situations, which we'll cover later on in the video. And finally, utility consumption can be lowered by increasing end-user fees. However, this will come at the cost of the happiness of your citizens and the efficiency of your companies. The inverse is true as well. I'm really happy that the diary clarified the electricity versus water issue. At the end of Diary 5, I was left with the impression that losing power was actually more devastating than water, which wouldn't necessarily be true in real life. And I love the new groundwater reservoir mechanic, at least in theory, and I can't wait to take it for a spin myself. And with those out of the way, let's dive into electricity production. In City Skylines 2, electricity can be produced locally or purchased from an outside connection. Outside connections can be used in a few different ways. First, they can provide 100% of your power. Second, they can provide emergency power when demand spikes, such as when there's a cold snap or a heat wave. And third, they can accept surplus energy, allowing you to recoup some of the cost of creating the power. The first option may sound attractive, but we now know that it's more expensive to import power than it is to produce it yourself. And the last option might sound like a good idea, but it appears to be a stopgap towards a better solution. Storing energy by creating emergency backup stations or by adding battery upgrades for certain power plants. The emergency battery stations or battery upgrades could be used to offset demand spikes. Further, emergency battery stations can be used to provide power when plants do not normally produce electricity, such as at night for solar plants. And I absolutely love that we're seeing energy storage being introduced to the game. It never really sat right with me that in City Skylines, you were able to power an entire region with wind and solar without having some sort of energy backup solution. So what's being added is much more realistic. City Skylines 2 introduces a more refined power transfer mechanic and now includes low and high voltage electricity as well as transformers. Electric cables carry low voltage electricity, which is the kind of power that is provided directly to a building. Roads now automatically have electric cables underneath them and standalone electric cables can be placed manually above or below the ground. Due to having a low overall power capacity, these lines cannot carry all of the electricity produced by a large power plant and cannot be used for outside connections. High voltage electricity is transferred using power lines, which have the ability to transmit power from large power plants as well as from outside connections due to their higher overall electrical capacity. These are the transmission lines that can be used to carry electricity long distances and cannot provide power directly to buildings. They can be placed above or below ground, so there will no longer be a need for hacky solutions such as using earthquake sensors to jump power. Finally, to connect a high voltage line to a low voltage line, a transformer station is now required. Transformers have a maximum capacity, which can lead to bottlenecks, a new and quite interesting game mechanic that we'll dive into in more detail later on in the video. As mentioned last week, City Skylines 2 contains almost all the power plants from City Skylines and a few extras. These power plants include wind turbines, 
which are the cheapest renewable energy source to build. Individually, they have a low electricity output, and that output is variable based on the anticipated wind where the turbine is placed. They do not require roadway access, but they can transmit power directly into the grid if they're placed along a roadway. If placed in the water or away from a road, electrical cables will be needed to connect them to the rest of the grid. And yes, this confirms that these plants can be placed in the water, so they are indeed a replacement for the advanced wind turbine found in city skylines. Next up are small coal power plants, which are cheap to build and maintain, but generate tons of pollution, require coal, and unlike most power plants, cannot be upgraded. These sound like a fine early game option that I'd want to replace as soon as I can. The coal needed for these plants can be produced locally or can be imported from outside connections. And then we have a newcomer, gas power plants, which are fueled by natural gas and are larger, more efficient, slightly less polluting, and slightly more expensive than coal plants. Similar to coal, natural gas is required to fuel the power plant, which can either be imported or produced locally. Natural gas, or petrochemicals, can be produced locally as long as a city has a specialized industry to extract and refine oil. This is a hint at a supply chain mechanic, and it sounds a ton like the industry's DLC. Coal power plants are similar to the small coal power plants we mentioned just a minute ago, but are significantly larger and produce significantly more energy, much more efficiently. In fact, it's cheaper to build and maintain one coal power plant than several small plants that could produce an equivalent amount of electricity. Further, they are upgradable and can grow with your city. Next, we have geothermal power plants, which are another source of renewable energy. They are quite expensive to build and maintain, and they work by converting underground heat into electricity. A change from city skylines is that these plants now produce pollution. However, it is less than that of coal plants. They also require a groundwater deposit to operate and they pollute that water source. I'll be honest, I'm really conflicted about these plants and I'm really looking forward to seeing what the actual pollution values are. I could see this being a plant that I don't really build that often, if at all. Then we have solar power plants, which are another source of renewable energy. However, the amount of energy they create depends on the time of day and the latitude of the city. Solar plants do not produce energy at night, but have small integrated battery systems that release energy during the evening. These plants are entirely green, producing only noise pollution. However, they are very expensive to build and maintain. The diary also references weather in relation to these plants, but doesn't really specify impacts. So we'll have to keep an eye out for more information on this in the future. It also appears that the small integrated battery isn't necessarily enough to make the plant viable on its own, and a battery backup may be required if solar is your only source of power. Further, I am unsure of how scaling of these power plants works, so hopefully we'll see more in the feature highlight video that can uncover how these scale. That brings us to nuclear power plants. They do not require any type of fuel to operate and do not create any sort of pollution other than noise pollution. However, they are very expensive to build and maintain and require a significant amount of water for cooling, which is a new requirement to City Skylines 2 that I am really happy to see made its way into the game. And last but not least, we have hydroelectric power plants, which are another source of renewable energy that does not create any sort of pollution other than noise pollution. These appear to work exactly as they did in City Skylines, which is fine. From the image, we can see that the top of the power plant still supports a road, and it appears that there are support buildings that are present, which is a welcome change. All in all, I couldn't be happier with the power plants included in the game. We're getting a very good variety of plants with impressively detailed models. It was also interesting to hear that you can create natural gas, though it appears to be similar to city skylines in that petrochemicals is the equivalent to natural gas. I'm interested in hearing if we'll see coal be something that we can mine, or if it'll be a generalized ore as was the case in city skylines. I'm not sure that everyone's going to agree with me, but I'm really happy to see that outside connections don't appear to be a way to cheese the power mechanic, as was the case in some of the SimCity games. We've been informed that it's more expensive to import power than to produce it locally, so while it's an option, it's usually not going to be the best choice from a financial standpoint. All that said, I can't see any drawbacks to creating this outside connection, so long as adding one isn't prohibitively expensive. I'd imagine that losing money during a power spike is preferable to a rolling blackout that causes people to flee your city or get incredibly sick. Next, the diary covers fuel logistics. The fuel logistics mechanics are about the same as they were in city skylines, albeit with a bit more complexity. Just like before, you can import fuel or produce it locally. In city skylines, you could do this by creating a zoned industrial area with either an ore or an oil specialization, and those would produce fuel. In City Skylines 2, this has been replaced with specialized industries that include their own supply chains. Specialized industries will take up a significant amount of space and generate a great deal of pollution, so there is no one right choice and every city will be a little bit different. Now to me, specialized industries sound a lot like the industry's DLC, and I'm really happy to see this mechanic get included in the game. Next, let's dive into power plant upgrades. Power plant upgrades work the same as other city service upgrades, which we discussed in the previous video. There are operational upgrades, extensions, and sub-buildings that can be added to power plants. 
These upgrades can provide a number of benefits, including increasing fuel storage, reducing fuel consumption, reducing the pollution that's generated from the power plant, increasing power generation, and in some cases, these benefits can be stacked with multiple upgrades. Not every upgrade will make sense for every plant, and because you can stack upgrades, you should set aside enough space to expand the plants in the future. Next, the diary dives into electricity distribution. In City Skylines 2, power distribution requires significantly more thought than just ensuring that every zoned area is connected to a power plant. Now, each power line and each electrical cable has a maximum capacity, and if overloaded, will form a bottleneck within your power system. These bottlenecks can lead to blackouts, so you're definitely going to want to avoid them. Bottlenecks can be resolved by adding additional electrical connectivity. You can do this by either adding additional roads, since they provide power, adding low voltage connections, or by adding a new high voltage connection with a transformer to bypass the bottleneck entirely. And if you read between the lines, this will encourage you to create a community that's well connected. And if you want to create a place that's disconnected, you can do that, but you'll have to put the additional infrastructure costs to make it possible, which is much the case in real life. Now, speaking of those bottlenecks, you can find those in the new electricity info view. The electricity info view provides information about electricity production, consumption, and bottlenecks. It also shows the battery charge status and capacity, as well as how much energy is being traded with outside connections. And it appears that this will make identifying issues with your power grid as simple as identifying traffic issues. And I'm happy to see this, because I know a number of you have expressed concerns about the complexity of the game, and it appears that fixing issues with your power system will require thoughtfulness, but not be overly complex. Now let's switch gears and go over our water and sewer systems, starting with our water sources. Similar to city skylines, water can be drawn from the surface of a water body or pumped from the ground. The surface water game mechanic appears to be identical to city skylines. However, there are significant differences in the groundwater mechanic. In City Skylines, you could pump an unlimited amount of groundwater out of any location on the map forever. In City Skylines 2, water can only be pumped from groundwater deposits unless you're using a water tower, which is very expensive. We'll talk about that more later. Groundwater deposits have replenishment rates and can temporarily run dry if water is pumped at a higher rate than it is replenished. They can, however, refill if pumping is halted or budgets are dropped. If a groundwater deposit comes into contact with pollution, it becomes contaminated. It can become clean again, decontaminating at the same rate as the replenishment rate. This leads me to a couple of questions. First, are we going to be able to adjust the budget of specific pumps to reduce their efficiency or not? Without this feature, it would make management of aquifers very difficult. Second, the diary says that groundwater usage is viable, which doesn't to me sound like a ringing endorsement about using them as a primary drinking source for a city. This makes me very curious to know if we're going to have a quick way to view our city statuses at a quick glance, similar to how a mod like City Vitals Watch works. It feels like we may need this with this game mechanic. Next, the diary covers water production and sewage. City Skylines 2 comes with a number of water and sewage assets, many of which are familiar and some which may seem familiar at first blush, but which actually have different functionality relative to City Skylines. These include water pipes, which, as has been mentioned, are built into most roads similar to electrical cables. However, unlike the power grid, there are no capacity concerns to keep an eye on. Any buildings on roads are automatically connected to the grid, and buildings that don't need to be on roads can be connected with standalone pipes. Wind turbines are a good example of this. And for buildings that do not require both water and sewer, such as an outlet pipe, single pipes can be used. All in all, I'm pretty happy with the adjustments that have been made to the water pipe system. Although I am curious if we're actually going to need separate water and sewer pipes, perhaps this comes in handy when making outside connections, but I can't really see another reason why they'd be really all that valuable. Next, we have water pumping stations, which are able to pump surface water into your freshwater system from lakes, rivers, and the ocean. And I'm going to pause right here because I'm going to be honest and say that I'm a bit disappointed to hear that we can pump fresh water from the ocean. With the depth of features added to the power mechanic, it just seems odd to be able to pump fresh water out of the ocean, and I'd be lying if I didn't admit to feeling a bit disappointed about this one. So it's a minor nitpick, but it's something that kind of bugged me. Next is one that probably feels familiar, but probably shouldn't. We have water towers. Water towers have this interesting mechanic that's very different than city skylines. They can pump a limited amount of water from anywhere on the map and aren't impacted by pollution at all. However, they are very costly to maintain compared to other water facilities. This, to me, sounds like a great trade-off, and I'm really glad that we're going to be able to place these in industrial districts now. I can't wait to see manufacturing districts with custom water tower assets, similar to what you might see near a water-intensive industrial use like a brewery. Next, we have groundwater pumping stations, but we've already talked about that already. At a basic level, it just allows you to pump water out of an aquifer in the ground. And then we come to advanced water pumping stations, which the diary calls a unique building with a higher output of fresh water. The water pumping rate is 10 times that of a regular water pumping station, making it a good choice for large cities. Now, I'm really curious as to whether using the term unique building means that it's actually a unique building like in city skylines, or if it's just an interesting building. Time will tell on this one. 
And then our nemesis returns, the sewage outlet, allowing you to dump 100% untreated raw sewage into your water bodies. It can be upgraded somewhat to reduce the amount of contamination. However, it's still not gonna be a replacement for an actual water treatment system. I'm really curious to know though, if these can be used as some sort of relief valve. So if we run out of sewage capacity, these flip on, that would seem to make a lot of sense to me. I'm guessing this isn't possible, but since we have battery backups for power, perhaps this is the case. Time will tell on this one as well. And last but certainly not least, we have the wastewater treatment plant, which purifies water so it can be used as drinking water once again. Pollutants are turned into solid waste, which is in turn collected by garbage trucks and then taken to a waste management site. I really, really love this asset. It might be one of my favorite additions to the game. It honestly makes your water system much more realistic. Oftentimes you see water getting purified and pumped back into the system. So it's really great to see that. That brings us to water facility upgrades. Water facility upgrades are similar to other city service building upgrades, including the electrical upgrades that we talked about just a bit ago. These upgrades can add capacity and add water treatment capabilities for both water and sewage facilities to combat pollution. Just a couple of these upgrades include an advanced filtration system for polluted water intakes, chemical purification for sewage outlets, and sub-buildings to increase capacity at water pumps. This one kind of threw me a bit. I find the ability to treat water at a pumping station to be incredibly intriguing and I can't wait to see how that works. I am a bit curious about water storage though. It doesn't appear to be present in the game at this time and considering that we have power storage featured so prominently and that water storage was possible in city skylines, I guess I wouldn't be surprised at all to see this make an appearance in the game in the future. And last but not least, that leads us to our water and sewage info view. The new water and sewage info view highlights both water and sewage service buildings and their utilization. It also provides an overview of our underground water reservoirs as well as water-based pollution. Similar to the electricity info view, it also provides information about imports and exports. And before we move on to my final thoughts, let's take a look at the feature highlight video to see what we can decode. So I'm gonna start in a little bit of a weird spot today and I wanna to respond to something I've seen in the comments a number of times. And that's talking about the graphics of this game now, what I think this really comes down to, this comment is really about landscaping because the tree LODs look off right now. It's one of the things that has kind of caught my eye. That and the smoke. I think the smoke looks pretty good, but there's something a little bit off about it. But the trees in particular, it to me seems like maybe there are some LOD or level of detail issues right now. Uh, a couple of good examples of that. This tree right here looks very rough and really a lot of the street trees do as well. But it's not just that. There's a lot of hints in this image that this is a beta image. So there are lighting effects on the rooftops that are pretty off. There are missing textures on bushes. There are snowmen present in the middle of summer, things that are just not normal. But I want you to contrast what we're seeing here with this next image. What we're seeing is very highly detailed models and some of the same issues that we were seeing in the previous issue being resolved. This is the same area, more or less. And what we see is that all the lighting issues in the top of the buildings, they're gone. The lighting issues that we were seeing on, on these bushes here, they're gone. And the trees look really good. Now, there is a bit of motion blur to the trees. That could be an artistic direction. You might not like that. I didn't love the donut vehicle in City Skylines, but I understood it because it was a choice that the developer decided to take with the art style. It seems like there are many more trees in City Skylines 2 than City Skylines 1, and that is a trade-off. There's gonna be a trade-off there. And the trade-off is not everyone is going to have a crazy computer that they're playing on. Before I started the channel, you might recall I played Bluffside Crossing on a Dell XPS laptop, a 13 inch touchscreen laptop. It was very underpowered, but I could play the game. And that is what they're developing for. They're developing to be able to play the game on a variety of systems on different power levels. And I think there are trade-offs that need to be made if you are going to have lots and lots of foliage. So this has been a very meandering discussion of landscaping. And I guess what I'm really trying to say is I think it's going to get better so don't judge it too harshly and we're seeing our first transmission lines and they look outstanding it's great that these lines are going to be for transmission lines and not just general purpose power lines like they were in city skylines that said there's a couple of interesting things here we're seeing these lines side by side this is to have excess capacity i assume we're also seeing that there is landscaping cleared underneath here i desperately hope that that is a feature this is actually something that's very interesting because I've actually worked on a project like this where we worked with ATC. It's the American Transmission Company, and they actually have very specific guidelines as to where landscaping can be relative to these transmission lines. 
Underneath it, all you can have are bushes and grasses. And then there's a zone outside of there where you can have understory trees and decorative trees. Think of a crab apple or things of that nature. And then outside of that zone is where you can have like a, a big maple tree or an oak tree. But it had to be far enough away from the lines that at maturity, if the tree were to fall, it wouldn't fall on the lines. Now, if we're getting into a crazy level of detail with the electricity system, I really hope that that's present in here. And this image does give me some hope, but that is something that I really would hope to see. I think that these trees are too close to the lines if it's gonna be super realistic, but seeing nothing underneath there except some stuff, some really small bushes does give me some hope. And here we're seeing a water treatment facility. It, the, the facility itself looks really good. Very interesting to see a sidewalk going right into the water. There's a couple of interesting things in the shot though that I want to point out. First of all, we're getting to see that cut and fill technique right here. There's a gigantic retaining wall, it's a couple stories high, but it looks really good. Do you see how it conforms to the landscaping here? That is absolutely outstanding. I'm gonna be very curious to know if we were to use our terraforming tools and try to, to tame this a bit, if that would lower the wall after it's been built or if it is what it is. If you can modify it, I think that would be a good thing because I think if I were to build this, I would think I've got to redo the road because that retaining wall is too high, but it still looks really, really good. I also like what's going here. We got this stone uh, kind of going up to this bridge. It's missing uh, some sort of support right here, maybe right here. And look at how good this looks. In city skylines, you put a tunnel like this and it would either dip down or dip up and look crazy. This looks very flat, so very excited to see that. Then the other thing that I think is really glaring in this image is it's one that has been pointed out a number of times, and I think there are no key walls in city skylines too. So I'm hoping that there's more that we can do. There's really only been two things that for me have been big disappointments. It stinks to lose a mode of transportation. So not having bikes in the game day one is definitely a disappointment, but key walls were kind of the other one for me. So I'm really hoping that there will be assets in the workshop that we're able to pick up because this to me is pretty rough. <laughs> so this is really interesting as well. A couple of things. So I think we're looking at two wastewater treatment plants. One's right here and then we have another one right here. Kind of just rotated around. I, at first I thought that this could be a sub building, but I just, I just don't think that it is. That said, the sub buildings are something I want to talk about for just a moment. So here we've got two sub buildings. I believe that they are attached to this building. And then we have another sub building right here. I believe that this is a component of this building, but rather than being attached to the building, it's attached to this dirt road. I love, I, I mean, I love that flexibility if it truly is present. The one thing that I am a little bit curious about, and I'm gonna keep an eye out for it the entire video now, is these sub buildings. If this, if this facility here is attached to this building, I should be able to tr walk or drive between the two, and I don't see it right here. But here we get a shot of a solar plant, and there's a couple of interesting things to me here. First of all, it looks like maybe we have a transmission facility built right into this asset. Um, hoping that that's the case, because it seems like that's something we need to do. But it also appears that there's one back here, so maybe it's also a sub-building, or maybe you're able to add the transmission line to a power plant, not as a sub-building, but as a connection. If that is the case, that's a really interesting mechanic. I've kind of wondered how solar plants work. So I'm guessing you place the main building and maybe it comes with this up to here and that is your first solar plant. And then maybe there are small expansions here. So we get one right here, one right here, one here, one here, one here, so on and so forth. And then there's a large solar expansion as well. So we get one right here and then kind of so on and so forth down the line. The other thing that I think we're seeing here is in the dev diary, there's some discussion about small batteries that go along with the solar plants. I think we're seeing those right here. So we get one battery for each of these facilities. I am curious, these look like they're the same size. <laughs> so I don't know if that's reality or if it's just perception, but then it looks like we have another battery backup right here as well. Looks considerably larger, guessing that that is a sub building as well. Be very interested in knowing if this is sufficient to meet the needs of a city on a normal day because there were some hints in the dev diary that maybe if you have solar you have to have battery backup as well perhaps this does the trick we'll have to wait and see a couple of small things i want to point out here that aren't related to electricity 
First of all, I love that we're going to have the ability to create these covered bridges by our own volition. <laughs> Back in Clearwater County in Belmont, I wanted to have these bridges just as kind of a feature of a community. And it looks like in City Skylines 2, we will be able to do that. It also looks like we are seeing utilities underneath dirt roads. I don't necessarily love that. I'm hoping that that gets removed. It seems a little bit strange to me personally. The other thing that's interesting here. So we're seeing this grid being created and then it gets pulled into an existing road and it allows you to create the grid no problem. That is awesome. One other observation, there are a lot of thumbs down to building these new roads. That makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> Even if these folks knew that this road was going to be put in, uh, if there was any length of time in between them moving in and this road being built, there's generally a battle. People get used to what is around them. Change is difficult, even if it's change that you have been told about. Now we get two shots of our electricity info view that I just want to point out a couple of interesting things. First of all, I think the main thing to see in this shot is really that we're seeing this uh, electricity consumption by building. So here we've got a whole bunch of single family homes, very low energy utilization. They're at the lower end of the electricity consumption. This right here is a school and it looks to me to be at the higher end of the electricity consumption. With this park, it seems to be higher than the single family homes. That also makes sense. You think you figure there might be night lighting or something of that nature. In this next image, we're seeing some of our higher density buildings. And I think what we're seeing between some of these is electricity consumption by building level and that this is a lower level than this one. I am curious if we click on individual buildings, if we'll be able to get more information. I'm not sure the level of detail and granularity. Obviously that's not useful information most of the time, but it might be interesting information to have since the number is clearly being generated somewhere someone has access to it and here we see a transformer getting dropped it is clearly requesting the high voltage connection right away we see some thumbs down people do not like this being dropped by their house that's because this thing creates noise and reasonably people don't want to live next to one of these things anyway i am curious though you know having worked with a local municipal utility company they do go out of their way to make these things fit in so we're seeing a chain link fence around here. Nothing was said about upgrading these at all, but I am curious about this because that is something that is very real. So you'll see a multi-story wall basically put up around these things to make them blend in a bit better with their surroundings in some cases, particularly if it's in a residential area or even a shopping district. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we get more than just this option, but if we don't, I'm sure we'll see it in the workshop. And then two other quick things. We have Chirper here. I find this to be interesting because I was reading an article yesterday that Twitter is losing the bird. Uh, and then the other thing is right here. I'm noticing, I mean, I'm, I'm curious. It looks like we can zone into the water. Now, I mentioned this because it was possible often in city skylines. And to me, this is one of the more frustrating things that this was a possibility. So I'm really hoping that the zoning and at, at the actual release version of the game does not allow this. And you've probably seen this if you played City Skylines. If you were to zone this all out, the land would basically just pop up to out here. And all of a sudden, we have a building there. <laughs> Even though reasonably the building shouldn't be able to be placed there. And here we get to see our facility. It looks like it's been connected to a high voltage line. I think this is where our low voltage lines would connect up. Not necessary when it's on a road because the road does have the low voltage line, but I am curious if this is where we can connect up or if there are other options, but I would assume it's just in the front. Now here we're seeing a high voltage line being placed. It's going right over the top of this tree. I'm going to be very curious. Does this tree disappear? Uh, it looks like it maybe thins. <laughs> it looks like there's less tree, but there's still tree there. So I will be very curious to know how this it changes over time, if this is the mechanic in its final state or not. The other thing is there's all of these young trees underneath here. I'm assuming young lindens. I'm wondering if these are going to grow into the power lines or if they will be capped at this height. And then before we move on, one quick thing here, we see that we have a combined water and sewage pipe connecting that water treatment plant to this road over here. So I am going to be very curious. I'm guessing we can build right on top there if we want to, but uh, that's something that I'm going to personally try to keep track of 
put pads on there and things of that nature, but very neat to see that in the game as well. Two things in this shot to point out. Number one, the trees are all underneath here. So I'm guessing that the mechanic that I was talking about is not present in the game. The other thing I'm noticing is that we have our electrical doing kind of the same thing it did in City Skylines. So this is something that I, I saw people talk about as well, hoping that the electrical didn't end up on these gigantic concrete bases. I think this confirms that they do. Personally, for me, I don't think it's that big of a deal. The power lines themselves look better and the wires look better. This is a small nitpick. I think that the tree thing is, for me, more of a uh, concern, but also something that I can control on my own, so maybe it's not that big of a deal. And the trees are even bigger here, so, <laughs> so it's a thing. It's, it's a thing. Now here we're getting to see our first bottleneck in a power system, and I, I'm really happy to see that we can see this outside of the electricity info view. That was something I was a little bit worried about, a little bit concerned that that's the only place we'd be able to see this, but it looks like we can see this outside of that view, which is welcome news because it's going to be something that we're going to be concerned about, particularly starting out with this game. I have a feeling that we're all going to struggle with this a bit till we get our handle on the new mechanic. Now here we're seeing an outside connection being made. And this is something I've been curious about because there was more clarity around water and sewer, basically stating that you have to be on the edge of a map to be able to connect with an outside connection for water and sewer. But it didn't say the same thing with power, which makes me wonder if when we start a new map, a transmission line will also be present in addition to a road or how that is exactly going to work because right here it looks like we are at the very edge of the map i say that because we can kind of see the fog at the edge covering some of these trees where everything else is clear here or at least that's my assumption but we'll have to wait time will tell on that one and that time is now <laughs> because I'm pretty sure that what we're seeing here with the red, that would be the edge edge of the map. And the reason that I think that is if you look at this, the mod, the graphics look not so great outside of the actual buildable area. You can see that it looks very pixelated and there are no trees. So I'm guessing that that is the edge of the map. That is the outside connection. That said, reasonably, nothing was out here in city skylines. So even a pixelated mountain is a huge improvement over just fog and nothingness so i'm happy to see this and it's just it's interesting to me that they're showing us this this close up i am going to keep paying attention to this though because i am very curious if we are actually going to be able to create a power connection from the very beginning of the game that was something i was really hoping for and it's something that i thought they were hinting at and i would love that ability that was something i used all the time in sim city 4 for instance and i'm really hoping that we can do it in the new city skylines Look at the differences in power consumption of these buildings. We're seeing that some of these buildings consume a ton of energy, including this, which might be our university. Maybe it's a city hall. Not quite sure. And now I'm going to say it's definitely a university. <laughs> so here we're seeing a battery backup being created. So this is being dropped here. It's very expensive, 150,000, at least city skylines one money would be expensive. Maybe this is cheap in this game. And honestly, it's a very nice looking asset. I think it's very attractive. This looks like less storage, at least from the exterior buildings, than we have it for the solar plant. So that does make me very curious. And it does look like we have this transformer built into this asset. The other thing though, this is completely unrelated, but we're seeing some buildings being built on a cliff. And for the most part, I think the fronts of the buildings look very, very good. It looks like there's some negotiation of the heights here. The backs, we've got some interesting stuff going on here, but for the most part, even though this is on a hill, these look pretty good. So I'm very excited to see that. And now here we're seeing a battery upgrade being added to this facility. This is considerably cheaper. That said, it's being snapped to the back of this building. I think we're seeing confirmation that this these are not connected. So I'm hoping that that is a beta thing because right now it looks like workers would have to jump a fence to get to these batteries over here. And we're also seeing there's an additional battery bank. So this is something that increases the range of the station. So the battery station must only work within a certain range of a power plant or perhaps only serves a certain range of homes and businesses. Uh, and it looks like the noise pollution for this particular asset is low, but the overall pollution is medium. Very interested to see that this is actually producing air pollution. Though. I wouldn't have expected 
a battery station to produce air pollution. Kind of curious there. And this one is clearly an extension. So this is getting added onto the back. Now, the interesting thing about this is look at this. We have some uh, decorative features around the outside. So some of those get replaced, but they're now preventing you from accessing the back of the building. So very interested in knowing if that is going to be like that in the final version or not. And to me, this is kind of a demonstration of some of the quirks and features of this sort of modularity with our buildings. And, you know, I think over time it's going to be really good, but there are going to be some growing pains. So not a lot to say about this image, except for two quick things. First of all, we have another bridge option here. It looks uh, absolutely outstanding. But I think that this adds some credence to my theory about the LODs. So first of all, we've got trees here that look like they're, it, it kind of has that Google Earth effect where it looks like there's something wrong with the way that it's rendering it doesn't have the the, the correct number of polygons and as a result looks like it's a, a tree from mario 64 but this right here we've got a transmission line it is very detailed right here it is moderately detailed right here and then it breaks down into what looks like <laughs> it's floating a little bit so to me again i guess with the graphics things could change. I, I can't imagine that this is how it looks in the end game. There's probably some improvement there. Not sure how much, but yeah, this is this blobby thing right here can't exist. And I've just got to stop on this shot for a second. This looks like a reservoir, a dam is being created here, and we've got some uh, wind turbines above this. This is beautiful. The water, uh, just outstanding. I love. I mean, the depth, the change in elevation here is not much. It looks very realistic. I love creating small towns and rural environments and places off the beaten path in a game called City Skylines. So things like this to me are fascinating. Things like this to me feel very, very good. And this looks outstanding. Very happy to see it. And look at the level of detail here. There's even doors to come out and monitor this area where the engineers might take a look to see if things are wrong or maybe it's a viewing area. Just wow, <laughs> this whole model looks really, really good. And here we have a geothermal plant, and I'm really curious about this one after reading the dev diary. This asset, I mentioned it during the dev diary section. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use it if the way it's described is the way it actually is, which I think would be kind of a shame because I think that they're really interesting forms of power. And a place like Iceland really shows just how valuable and useful they can be and sustainable compared to other methods of generating power. And then we have a coal plant and there are clearly some additions here, additional storage. And then we are going to get a nuclear plant. This is, I so I think that the thing that, one of the things I'm most excited about is that these plants now require water. They're just massive. Like obviously the scale of these is not even close. <laughs> you know, like, this is our coal plant and this is like twice the size they actually had to bump part of the landfill back to create room for this thing. And I'm, I don't, I'm not sure if this is the end state or if this thing can get even bigger, but it's just, it's really great. And then we're seeing our groundwater deposits. And I'm really curious about this one. So I'm curious to know if we're making a map, assuming there's a map editor, if we are going to have to place these ourselves, or if this is gonna operate a little bit more like the fishing industry in Sunset Harbor, where certain conditions will mean that a groundwater deposit will appear. Now, groundwater deposits, what they are is a type of rock that will allow water to form within it. And these can be at a variety of different depths. So in theory, there would be certain conditions that would lead to an aquifer being more likely to occur in a certain area. So I'm curious to know if these are automatically generating in these areas due to the characteristics of the areas on the map or if these were placed manually. Now we were talking about the graphics earlier and I just wanna point out how outstanding these are. So these homes are so detailed. We have everything from grills modeled in this in this particular shot. We have curtains in the windows, sheds in the backyards. There are yards, which is pretty amazing. There's a clothesline in the back, which is interesting for a variety of reasons. Maybe someday I'll touch on that in a video. There's just lots of lots of little details in this, and it just looks absolutely outstanding. And that's what makes me think we don't need to worry too much about the trees. So here we're looking at a water pump that is polluted. 
and we're adding an advanced filtering system to the water pump, which is pretty cool. I am curious though, if we can add this to it, can we remove it eventually once we no longer need it? Because right here, the upkeep on this is $11,000 per month. It only removes 50% of the decontaminants. I would hope that when we don't need the additions, we can remove them. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of deleting buildings just to place the same building again. So we'll have to see how that works. Here we're seeing what I think is one of my few disappointments. And I mentioned this in the, in the main part of the video. But here we're seeing a water pump being added to what I presume is the ocean and we're just, or brackish at a minimum, and we're pumping some of that water into our freshwater system. To me, it feels like if you're gonna have so much detail in the electrical system, you probably should have that same level of detail in the water system, but unfortunately, we're not seeing that. That said, look at this coastline right here. The change in colors, this was only possible if you had Theme Mixer before, and it looks outstanding. I just like, just blown away by some of the water effects that we're seeing here. They look outstanding. They look very realistic. Now here we're seeing a wastewater treatment plant and we're having some of the upgrades added to it so that we can process the water and drink <laughs> the treated sewage. Now the interesting thing about this, if we take a look, $900,000 to add this to our wastewater treatment plant. So I'm, I'm, I'm just getting the impression that they wanted the numbers to be more jarring. Obviously, these numbers don't line up one to one with reality, but 900,000 feels a whole heck of a lot better to me than 25,000, which is what it might have been in city skylines. That's really great. Upkeep is 100,000 per month, which honestly, I think puts things into perspective. What we're seeing right here with a deficit isn't really that bad. This is one and a half wastewater treatment plants, so it's probably fixable. The other interesting thing here is we see that the purification rate right now is 50%. So we are treating 342,000 cubic meters per month, and we're outputting half of that with zero pollution. Now, when we add this add-on, we get to 75% purification rate. So our water output should expand, I guess I would assume. And then this asset, which is uh, 105,000, which is significantly less than this one back here, that apparently did nothing for our water output. Very, very interesting. But real quick, I wanted to point this out. We're getting a view of the advanced water pumping station. Looks like it costs a little under $100,000 per month in upkeep. So it's not that bad, but in comparison to what we were seeing with our wastewater treatment, this is probably gonna output a significant amount more of water. So this is probably a better option than upgrading the sewage treatment plant. Then the other interesting thing about this is we have water connections, standalone water connections connecting the island to the shore. Now, I've been really curious about why you would want to use a standalone water pipe or a standalone sewer pipe. The only thing I could think of is connecting water pumps to your system or maybe sewage outlets to your system. All of that said, you know, this is one of the very first cities created in City Skylines too. Hard to say exactly why this choice was made. But it is nice that we have the option to do this if we want to. But now I think it's time to move on to my final thoughts. So in general, I'm really excited about the new power and water mechanics in City Skylines 2, particularly the power mechanics. I think it's adding a lot to the game and it's going to make managing your power grid much more gratifying. And it's honestly, it looks a lot more realistic. Some of the mechanics remind me of a game called Power to the People. And if it's even fractionally as fun as that, it's gonna be a really good time. The water mechanics are pretty good. I'm curious to know if there's gonna be more added on there in the future or not. It seems like there's room for expansion in terms of the ability to clean up pollution and maybe even the depth of the mechanic itself. And I would really love to see things cleaned up as it relates to salt water. I don't think it's going to happen, but that's something I would personally really like to see. But what do you think about the new services? What are you the most excited about? Is there anything you wish would have been added? Let me know down in the comments. Or if you're feeling bashful, consider dropping an emoji for the sake of engagement and hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And thanks again for sticking with me as we go through these deep dives. I'm going to continue to cover these every Monday until the game is released. That is unless I am late like I was last week. But once again, I really thank you, and I really can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.